Hello, hello, hello. Hopefully I've got this thing working. The first live stream, the first video of 2019. Did I nearly say 2012 there? I really did. Ah, it's so good to be back doing this again, but also so nerve-wracking. I really thought I'd figured all this out, but uh, yeah, if you haven't had your notifications that I was going live, that's because I'm an idiot and forgot you've got to set a video to public. So, fingers crossed that there's even anyone going to be here. Um, I also, because if you guys didn't see last Sunday, I believe it was, where I totally messed up the idea of doing a live stream. I tried to live stream from my mum's house and that all didn't work. But so many technical hitches because I forgot there are so many different things you've got to change. So I hope I changed them all back. So can you guys let me know in the chat, please, if... The audio is working, if the visuals are working, if everything is actually working. <laughs> oh boy, great start to the year. Anyway, I hope you all had an awesome Christmas and New Year. hope Santa was good to you, if you let me know in the chat. Uh, what Santa brought you, if you've got good gifts, good creative things, how your year's been. Uh, what have we got in the chat? We have Sandra. Well, hello, good to see you. And Dana, hello and a wave. Way, way back. And Georgia. Good morning, Georgia. It is four o'clock in the afternoon here, but I'll I'll take a good morning anytime I'm needing the coffee to kick me awake. Um, I, as some of you probably know, visited my mum up in the Highlands of Scotland for for Christmas and New Year. So that's me just back, completely exhausted. I drove down on Friday. Today's Sunday, right? I'm I don't start work properly till tomorrow, so I'm still in that I have no idea what day of the week it is and I've eaten too much cheese phase of of the time. Um, but yeah, so I drove back the day past yesterday and I'm still suffering. It's a long time since I was in practice of doing long drives. But anyway, we're back. It's all it's all done. Um uh, Sandra says everything's working, Mum says everything's working, and we've got Megan. Good morning, afternoon. <laughs> uh, Dana's in Georgia, so hello in Georgia. Um, it's 11am in in America as well, so cool. Uh, yeah, we've got all over the world. So yes, I know, it's, it's morning. It's morning in America, so awesome. So what are we going to be doing um, today in this stream? You can tell how well prepared I am. Well, we have. It's it's a new day. It's a new month and it's a new year. And I'm not going to sing, but I was tempted. Um, but it's, it's a new year. It's a new month. So I've got to do all my stats for how did I do in Etsy on last year and last, last month. Pennsylvania, that's 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 where Dana is. Awesome. Um, yeah, so if you want to take your bets to how I did, how you all think I did in December, because I had the beginning of November, I effectively shut off my sales in my Etsy shop. I put the shipping dates, I put the processing times so late that nobody would get anything by Christmas. So I assumed that would kill my shop. So let me know. Um, how you all think I did and also we get a chance to look at the entire year which I think is kind of I I hope you guys will find it interesting the whole thing of with all the changes on Etsy and people saying it's an oversaturated market can a crafter like me can someone making handmade goods still make money still grow on Etsy and yeah, well, my answer there is going to be yes. You know that because you've seen how the rest of the year went. But yeah, I want to share how my year did. So that's the main thing we'll be doing and just catching up with you all because I have missed, I have missed this. I've missed my little chats and I am buzzing with ideas for new videos, which should be so cool. I scripted a load. There, my bullet journal, my bullet journal is still up there and... If you haven't seen the videos on that so far, I'm finding it so awesome. I'm not the most beautiful, creative, at drawing um, type of person there. I'm not the neatest at doing paper crafts. However, I'm finding it so inspirational, really. I can see it. I'm getting so much more done because I'm breaking everything into chunks and saying, rather than, I've got this one big, giant thing to do. Like, today, I have these small tasks to do. And I can do a task, and I can... 
um, where's the words going with this? I can do the task, I can tick it off and I can feel I've done stuff. So that is so helping me so much more and it's helping me come out with ideas because that's where I had to come out with the idea of a theme for January. So that's going to be Japanuary and I've got some cool videos hopefully, some cool creative ideas. And if you make anything in the Japanuary theme, Asian inspired crafting, then don't forget to share it on Facebook either. Why don't, Facebook's not over there. Facebook's on there um but share it on facebook either pam duthie's felting friends the group or ben mcfuzzy lugs the page and then at the end of the month we might get a have get a have a look can't speak we might have a look at some of your japanuary themes all right um what have we got uh sandra is in finland Aland Islands, did I say that right? Alan? Uh, we know I'm rubbish. And Patty's here. Hello, Patty. I'm going to say it wrong, but she's a rare artist. If you haven't seen her channel, definitely head over there. She just did, um, she does, creates music covers on this beautiful instrument, which is the Araya, which um, is, is a big... How how do you, I I think of it like something like a big version of a Jew's harp or something like that, but it makes beautiful haunting music. I first heard her doing the Greatest Showman cover, which is amazing. I love that music anyway, but it works so well on that. And she's just done a cover of Little Drummer Boy with her, with her. I think it's your son and your niece. I might be wrong. I can't remember. My memory's shocking, but it is very lovely as well. So everyone check over. Um, none of my business do a mcdonald's review uh yeah i don't really go to mcdonald's so i can't do that um yeah i i don't i don't eat carbs at the minute i'm off carbs so mcdonald's is really no good for me um oh patty's 11 year old daughter started a bullet journal she loves it and creating some awesome little art in it yeah i'm just finding it so cool i hadn't heard of it till i was on on YouTube and I thought you know something about planning because I was I did not cope in November December with all my orders coming in and all the little things that you've got to do to keep in control of everything you know it's the little tiny jobs that you leave behind you you see the great big job and you settle down you focus on that great big job and you forget about you know I can I can put off mailing a customer that I should have done. That takes two seconds, but I'm too busy going, no, I've got this giant thing to do. I can't send an email. So if I can just tick off on my list and say, these are the things, these are the important things that need done today. It just makes such a difference. And to add a little creativity. Oh yeah, you can do a little um, little survey. I'll just, if you can leave in the chat, but also if you're catching this in the replay so I can catch everyone who didn't catch the live um if you leave in the comments as well what you want for a theme for february i was thinking forest fairies so that way we can do fairies and forestly for forestry creatures but if you have any other ideas for what a february theme could be and then i've already decided i'm i'm making the decision march april may game of thrones sorry <laughs> that's what we're doing but that gives us figures and dragons and dire wolves and giant elephants and all sorts of things so hopefully that'll be a fun theme as well um oh patty it's your grandson and a friend's daughter but the the me the, the little drummer's boy is fantastic and so cute and your grandson is a fantastic little actor i really enjoyed that and um, megan Megan's friend just told you about bullet journal and then you saw my last video you haven't done it but it looks cool yeah I took I was watching quite I, I was binge watching quite a lot before I decided how to do it and I was blown away with how creative everyone is and what beautiful things they make um and I thought I cannot possibly do that but then when you actually go in and look at the people who started bullet journal in the first place it is so simple and so basic it's just literally li literally bullet points and then you move the bullet point you know you just make your own planner putting 
things that you need that are important to you rather than having a set planner but people run with them and make them pretty so I'm doing somewhere in between of trying to add a little bit of pretty but I'm not one of those ridiculously organized people so it, it's helping me more than anything Megan, I know it's the last year of Game of Thrones, so I have to do something about that. I've already got plans. I've been sketching out my little Jon Snows and my little ghosts and lots of dragons. You know there's going to be lots of dragons. So we have to do something to celebrate and commiserate that. But then we've got books to look look for for everyone who reads books, which you totally should because they're better than the, better than the TV show. Right, but let's get on to this of what my shop stats are. Oh, the voice is going already. What, what my, my stats have been for the month and for the year, because it's been pretty awesome, actually. Oh, trying to set everything up here. I'm so out of practice at doing basic internet things. Right, this should, this should be sharing my screen with you. You guys, let me know if this is working. If you can see my screen, this should be showing you my shop manager and my stats for the past month, for the month of December. And let's see how we did with all of that. So for the month, my total views were 5% down year on year, which is perfectly fine. That's 5% in the great big scheme of things is such a tiny amount, it doesn't count. And a lot of people are saying just now, they're saying, oh no, I'm making changes and my views are going down every day. Am I doing stuff wrong? And I wanted to show this because it's super important to see this here, that if you think, you know, you're not going to keep growing and keep growing steadily across the year. Uh, Georgia, it's working fine. Thank you so much. So you're not going to keep growing across the year. People aren't shopping as much as they were in the run up to Christmas. That's just how it is. So no matter what you do, there's likely to be a bit of a dip. I mean, you can see probably roughly we're talking I'm at about half of what I was. And that's just what it's like. That mean that doesn't mean we're doing anything wrong. It just means the actual volume of people who are online shopping for things is less than it was a month or two ago. And that totally makes sense. Good morning, Wendy, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, good to see you all. Um, so, so, although my total views is down, the number of visits is actually up 9%, which is interesting and something I will possibly look into because obviously the number of actual visits increasing but the views dropping just kind of means that people well what it it means that people are coming and only coming for one page they're not bouncing around and looking at other things which could be a good thing it could mean they're searching and Etsy's doing a really good job of telling them the right thing sending them to the right thing so they just see it and buy it or it could mean that Etsy's showing them the very long, wrong thing, so they see something, it's not what they wanted at all, and they bounce somewhere else. So that, it, it could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing, but again, 5-10% in the great big scheme of things, it's not a massive amount. So I'm not going to worry about that unless that became a massive trend. This time of year, oh, things are just... <laughs> everybody's bonkers with some people are still shopping that this can still be a high ish time because people have money to spend that they got for christmas but but overall it's a lot lot lower um right so for the month of december what did we have we had 48 orders, which I think is amazing. I was expecting none and I made 1100 hundred and thirty nine pounds one thousand one hundred and forty pounds almost again pretty amazing and if we look we can see that the the sales are following the visits which makes sense I had much more at the start and then from the middle it tailed off which totally makes make sense if you're shipping things from across the world you don't really want to be ordering just before Christmas although still some set steady orders from people who are not wanting things for Christmas so I'm super happy with that hmm 
Malif, hello! Finally joined the live. So good to see you here. Welcome. Uh, Sandra saying she's had terrible bots destroying the stats. So much bot traffic on Etsy. Oh, Sandra, that's a shame. I haven't looked into that yet. I haven't seen much about that, to be honest. This past half of the year, I've just been mainly working on getting my orders done. I haven't been focusing on the data quite as much as I should do. But that's an awful pain if there's, there's bots spoiling things. We've just got to find ways to ignore the bot stats and see what we've got going. Um, no, I was going to say hopefully the stats they're giving us on search would help, but that really doesn't. Um, Georgia, yeah, if you have to keep the same level from before the holidays, you would burn out fast. You are so right. It is a good thing to have a dip. I mean, seriously, before Christmas was bonkers. So I still have some orders to deal with. I'm still felting away, but um, at the end of the day, you know, it is calmed down. And I'm happy with that because that I actually had time to put all my prices up in my shop. I had to do that because everything did so well. I wanted to find a way to slow things down a bit. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Wendy's asking if Mia, my dog, who has one of my dogs, who's taken herself off to bed, did she go home or did she hide and stay with Grandma? Because um, Mia does... Mia loves all people. Um, probably all people more than me. And she's she's been loving cuddling up with Mum. But, yes, Mia came home with me. Um, Patty, yeah, the analytics from a different platform. The actually one of the main reasons I started doing this YouTube thing was watch. I'd been trying to help people with their Etsy stats and Etsy SEO and stuff, and then I started watching Brian Brian G Johnson, and what he was talking about was almost the same thing. So I thought, can I use what I know from my Etsy and help? grow on YouTube and can I use some of the things I'm learning on YouTube and grow on Etsy and I work them together and absolutely um, it, they, learning learning how to do good SEO in one platform has really helped another platform and certain things that I try that work on Etsy I go is this going to work on YouTube try it out and it does and it's all it's all awesome and it it, it's all stats it, it's all cool to see the different stats which has really helped me um sandra your bounce rate was at 98 at christmas and you looked into google analytics and it was bots doing the mess yeah that's a total pain um but good that you're you're able to snoop into the analytics i i actually have to do more in looking at my Google Analytics because that is one of my plans for this year is to get more more views from Google because I think that's going to be so important for all of us like it's awesome to build up on Etsy it's awesome to build up on the platform that you're on but if we can understand more how to drive traffic just from Google then we can succeed on anywhere on the internet like Etsy or YouTube that's that's our step in but then once we've got there it's kind of good to to be able to learn how to work with a daddy to Google's Google's the big guy so I'm going to work more on Google Analytics in the new year uh, Malith, so December was awful. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But you started January with five sales and, and that's great. That is great. That is awesome. It's, I always, the, the first sales of the year are so exciting. It's silly. There's no difference between two weeks ago and just now. But I'm like, yay, it's my first orders of the year. Um, um, I believe it's a big problem if you're not, you know, your items cannot be shipped on time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it it totally it makes sense. But I did see this year people were shopping so much earlier, which is why I had to cut off orders. But even then, as you can see, people still still ordered and they knew they weren't getting it in time for Christmas. So. So that's that's just what we have to do. I mean, I guess people know if something's handmade just for them, it's not next day shipping. And it says on Etsy and yeah, I mean, I might get some not so good reviews from people who expected things quicker, but I tried to communicate and tell them how long it would take. So that's all you can do. Um, yeah. 
and they had to purchase in November to make sure it will come in time. Yep, yeah, absolutely the same here. Um, basically, it was from the beginning of November, I wasn't guaranteeing Christmas anymore, which is massive, and I thought that would kill me, but it really didn't. And let's let's click here. Yes, let's compare to last year. How did we do? Big and yeah, considering I wasn't guaranteeing any shipping in time for Christmas. 45% increase in orders, so that was, oh it usually tells you the numbers, come on, no, no, oh, they've changed how that shows, but anyway, uh, 48 orders, which was 45% increase, and the 1,100, blah blah blah, is 29% increase year on year, so even closing down my orders, from November I still actually did awesome and that is just simply because of the the good SEO that I'd been doing before all the changes that Etsy made have come into line with the things that I was doing which is kind of cool um so yeah everything's really picked up so super happy with that um <laughs> Melith, yeah, totally like a new beginning. I know, it, it's your new school book, isn't it? The beginning of the year. Um, Patty, that's where, where where she's lost Google. Who do you learn from? I've watched Google tutorials, but, but the brain just doesn't get that stuff. Yeah, I know the feeling. Well, the thing is, I... I sort of started accidentally with Google, but that was many years ago. When I started out, I was a driving instructor and I wanted to build a website. And then I realized you had to get people to come to, to actually find you. So I had to learn about SEO and I did a little bit, but I wasn't really great at it. And then when I started on Etsy and for years I did nothing, then I realized you had to do SEO. So I'm... There's stuff that I already know from Google, which is fairly basic and some of it's not good practice at all. Um, but the simplest thing to think with any SEO is the search engines trying to help the person that's searching. So what Google wants, when someone searches on Google, it wants to show them the things that they're most likely to click on. That's that's its thing. It wants So if you put how do I fix my tap? It wants to take you to the place that's going to answer that question. It doesn't want you bouncing around lots of different places. So the difference between Google and YouTube is going to be when you're doing it with with YouTube, when someone searches for something on YouTube, YouTube wants them to watch for a long time. So how do I fix a tap? Here's part one, and here's the shop where you go to do all these things, and here's this. Let's let's spend an entire afternoon going down the rabbit hole. And that's what YouTube wants, whereas what Google wants is this is the one site, this is the one place that you have to click on. So that's the main difference in you want to answer the entire question on that page on Google. Um, so so that's that's my thought so far. It's something I'm working on and we will be looking at my Google stats through the year and see if we can increase things and I've got some videos in the plans and I've got some things I've been working on and some new things that Google's doing that's really really cool as well. Um, so hopefully this is this is what we'll work on in the new year. Um, do, 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 do. Where did I get to? Uh, Wendy, should you have a website? Yes and no. <laughs> right. This is the answer. What, what I would say is yes, it can totally help you to have web presence. And it's pretty easy nowadays to get a Wix or Squarespace or something type of website. But again then you have to be able to drive traffic. So you have to understand the search engine for the website. What I would say is it certainly it doesn't hurt because another thing that gets you more chance is if you've been around for a while and you're still active. So if you create something just now, then that's kind of put your foot in the Google door. That's saying this this is a website and it's building up, even if it's very slow, it's building up views and everything. So over time, you might get presence over time. 
Um, what I have, I have websites, but I don't deal with them properly. What I've found the easiest is to run, to do something like a blog. That's a little bit easier. Now, I do, it's many years since I started my blog. My blog is on Blogger, Blogspot. I chose that because at the time that was owned by Google. So it's the same way as does YouTube do better on Google because YouTube and Google own each other. Well, Google owns YouTube. So anything that Google owns, it's going to kind of promote a little bit better obviously. But I believe things like WordPress are possibly a little bit better in this day and age. But having a blog is really good because there's lots you can do on it simply. You can put up a post today. To, you know, it's, it's an active thing. Although I don't know that people read blogs quite so much as they used to. Um, also, super important to be building up the social media at Right, what I'll say, rather than should you have a website, build up one more thing, you know, do one more thing. So I know you have like a Facebook group, but build up the one thing and then focus on something else. So you've got presence in lo in several different places, all with your name, all with your branding and the time, what you've got time to work on. If that sort of makes sense, I'm 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 thinking out loud because I haven't planned all this <laughs> out in my head yet, um, but it can really help to to say right this month I'm going to focus on building up one thing and see how it goes and see can you keep that going. But yeah, totally have something somewhere else. Another thing I'm going to be making videos for very soon that I'm going to be starting doing some more on is mailing lists. That's kind of super important in that if everything dies, I was going to say something rude there, but let's not get demonetized for my first video. If everything dies um, on Facebook, if everything dies on Etsy, then you might lose everybody you already had. So if you have a mailing list that you can collect people's data and you're able to mail them and say, you know, here's here's where I went, then that could be a cool thing. Although you need a strategy for that as well, um, to to get permission to gather people's data and also to keep them interested in what you're posting, not to just spam them. So that's work also. Everything, every different thing is work in its own right. But yeah, start start something. Start something different. Um, right, let's let's get back to the chat. Um and Lily Tree is here. Hello, Happy New Year, Lily. And you're not late at all. We appreciate you. And I know, I mean, you're you're coming here instead of Dean Emin, which is huge. So thank you. Um Patty, you're most welcome. Uh Malith, what about sending people from your Etsy shop directly to your website? Like purchasing from the website, you'll get a coupon coupon and you may get um, oh that's skipping may get on your email list yes just as long as you keep in with the terms of Etsy so if someone comes to you and wants to buy you can't try to avoid Etsy, Etsy fees by saying oh no don't buy here buy on my website that's against the terms and that's rather shoddy and it will annoy people as well but if when people buy from you you send them a link to sign up to your mailing list or to join your social media or to join your website and if they go there then they'll get a coupon for 10% off or something that's perfectly okay yeah absolutely just as long as you stay in with the terms and conditions of each platform absolutely fine Yeah, Lily. So right, um, Wix do have blog features. They also have plugins that whatever blog you're using, you can actually convert things across. I've done that as well. Um, it has a blog. I I've got several Wix websites. I don't remember the passwords. Um, but yeah, there's there's widgets that you can pull across Blogger and WordPress blogs on as well. So either either way, but yeah, quite right and. Wix, they're super easy and free, which it frees good. And then once you're happy with it, you can spend the money to get the actual domain domain name. Yes. Um, 
Melith, yeah, absolutely. You need to have more. It's the problem. You need to put so much time into Etsy um, to get it up and running. You totally do need to. You can't have 72 different things. But at the same time, you can't just have the one thing. So it's finding what's the best use of your time. I've tried lots of different sites like Etsy. We did Folksy and I, the, I can't remember the name of all the other ones. But I found that on different sites that was spreading my focus too much. Um, but certain other things really help. And interestingly enough, YouTube seems to be helping quite a bit as well. Um, surprisingly. And that, that's just a completely different platform. I didn't think YouTube would drive traffic to Etsy, but it is doing. Um, uh, losing, losing, losing what I'm seeing. Oh, Peggy, thank you so much. Um, Wendy, thinking Instagram should be next. Yeah, I've started posting a little bit more on Instagram. I'm going to try and learn about all these hashtags and be down with the cool kids. Um, because, I mean, obviously you guys know I've, I've done pretty well. I've not done pretty well. Pinterest has done pretty well for me. Coffee's cold now. Pinterest has done pretty well for me. But that's not really the work I've done. That's other people sharing. But Instagram, yeah, that's that's big. Everyone does it. I should have figured that out years ago. So Instagram, I'm working on. So we can grow Instagram together. <laughs> Lily, yeah, Pam versus D, Smackdown. I, I've I've heard the Nimmin brothers are are pretty pretty tasty and tall. They they could definitely have me in a fight. I'm afraid. Um. Oh, Lily's just started Instagram. Absolutely. Um, fantastic. We should... I, I assume you can share your handles in the chat because you're all um, moderators. So stick up stick up your Insta... Do you call them handles? Names? Ads? Put up your Instagram thingies here and we can all at least follow each other and get a good start this way. <laughs> Wendy sounds like a foreign language. It all does, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> Wendy has her Instagram. The daughter, her daughter started it, and she hasn't even opened it. The one good thing I've found with Instagram now is that I can post to it directly from my phone, and it's linked to Facebook. So Facebook and Instagram can share each other without anything else you share on Facebook. Facebook goes, nah, let's link off the site. I don't really want to share that, so it kind of suppresses you a bit. But Instagram and Facebook like each other, so you can grow a little bit Facebook and Instagram wise. I tried IGTV, Instagram TV, making videos for Instagram. I don't like that at all. I'll maybe look at that in the future, but I don't like it. Yeah, absolutely, Lily. Um, Wix is it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you can work just about anything, it's just clicking photos, clicking and dragging, it, it's pretty good. Um, trouble keeping up with the chat, I'm loving this, great job guys. Um, Melith, you can send them your creations and they will promote it very good on Instagram too. Now oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Wendy, I so make the same face when talking about Instagram. Yeah, that's uh, Insta <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we've got to think of a less positive word, Insta unsure face. But yeah, I when anyone talks about Instagram, I just think of girls sharing pictures of their backsides in those Insta poses. But we, yeah, we've got to take it over, crafty Instagram. Um, Elizabeth, Happy New Year! You're building up a community on Instagram before you open your Etsy shop. Fantastic! No, that's great. Um, it is so much easier to start things up if you've already got a following somewhere else. Unfortunately, your Instagram name does not meet the shop target. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the branding thing is a problem. I know a lot of people, like, when they start out with one thing... Well, I'm kind of stuck in that a little bit because... I started my Etsy shop 10 years ago, now they're coming up 11 years ago, and that was the dog's name, Ben McFuzzy Lugs, and then I got my Twitter, I got everything else with the same name, 
And then when I started YouTube and Brian G. Johnson said, no, don't use Ben McFuzzy Lugs, use your own name. So now I'm like stuck between two different lots of branding of either Pam Duffy or Ben McFuzzy Lugs, which is a bit of a pain. But yeah, we'll, we'll work it. The Pam Duffy is gonna is more of the hopefully marketing helping to grow things and Ben McFuzzy Lugs is my crafty little dog that's asleep just at the side here. Um yeah Wendy we can all that's it we're all gonna we're gonna insta instant grow inst insta grow together. <laughs> yes a darling Bear Maker's Cottage. I nearly said Beer Maker's Cottage, which sounds cool too. Bear Maker's Cottage. That is so cute. And Lily thinks hers is Lily Tree UK. Oh, I got a ping. What did I get a ping for? Um, <laughs> yes, the duck face. Absolutely. Um, Elizabeth had no idea how to open an Etsy shop when she started the Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's another thing is there's stuff that hasn't even started just now that's going to blow up in the next few years. Some things, st I mean, who, right, ha hands up in shame. Who remembers before Facebook? Who did MySpace? Who did LiveJournal? Who did Bebo? Who's that old that they even know what I'm talking about here? Um, yeah, that's that's quite a fright. <laughs> but but yeah, who who knows what these things are? <laughs> that's and we thought when we had a life journal, we thought that was the thing and that was amazing, and everyone went. All of my friends went on it, and then suddenly everyone came off that. And we went onto MySpace and you had to learn how to code and it was complicated and pretty and wonderful and we thought this was the thing. And then everyone came off that and Facebook came along and we thought, well, this Facebook, it, there'll be other things. Um, it's not going to take off. What, Facebook? You can barely do anything on it. It's nothing like Instagram. And yeah, Facebook's still here. Google Plus tried to take over and didn't manage. So you don't know what's going to be the next big thing. I mean, Twitter, I thought, who on earth's ever going to like Twitter? And I've been sitting saying that for Instagram for quite a while, but clearly I'm wrong. I still don't get Pinterest, to be honest. I do well on it, but I don't, I don't get it. It's not somewhere I hang out. Um, right, back to chat, back to chat. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, and Penelope, happy birthday! It's Penelope's birthday, everyone. So say, say happy birthday to Penelope. January babies are the best. Can you tell it's my birthday in January? <laughs> Wendy, Ben's pet <laughs> is, is me. That's true. Lily, it is indeed all Brian G. Johnson's fault. It's a funny thing. I have so many friends called Brian. You can literally say just about anything and say that's Brian's fault and it will be Brian's fault. It'll be our Brian's fault. George, um, thank you. Yay, first another first time waiver. This is cool. Um, so good to see. Thank you for joining us. Um Duck face kills. <laughs> I haven't heard of any duck face deaths yet, but it could happen. Oh, Wendy didn't have internet yet before before Facebook before TV. Um, yeah, there is that as well. I I just had because I just left uni and internet was important. Uh, but Mum remembers a time before Facebook. Uh, Patty's a rare artist on Instagram, but mine's all music related, and she did MySpace. Yay! Uh, Wendy, I thought you meant Facebook, not TV. Yeah, um, but yours is all music re related. Awesome. Make sure and everybody get everyone else. We can follow each other and figure out this Instagram thing. Um, remember a time before Facebook? Oh, Penelope, Mrs. Geocities. I re that's just that's a name I recognise, but I didn't I didn't get involved in anything with that. That's cool. Um, Megan's Instagram is Megra at ninety eight. I got it by accident. Ah, stop scrolling. 
chat. Um, got it by accident, took a photo of my dog. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I miss, I sort of miss MySpace as well. It was a lot more geeky. That's when Facebook started, I really thought this will not take off because what do you do here? You just chat to each other. You don't have to code in different text and boxes here and put images and yeah, Facebook seems so boring. And yet we're all on Facebook. <laughs> Elizabeth, yes, you remember the times without a smartphone and without the internet. Yep, we're, we're all off. We're all old. I remember the times um, when I learned word processing in uni, showing my age here, I can't remember which version of Windows it was, but it was pre... well, not, not which version of Word, but it was pre-Windows. We used Word without a mouse and you had the, the strip that you put on top of your keyboard and that told you what all the shortcuts were, what all the, the F keys were. So old. <laughs> Lily, RIP Google Plus. I know. Um, Wendy looks at Pinterest for ideas. Yeah, I I still don't even do that that much. I really, I really should. Um happy lots of happy birthday Penelope's. Awesome. <laughs> Wendy told her daughter, I want to follow you around on Instagram. And she said, Ma, you're so fun, so dumb. See, I said fun by accident. Awesome. <laughs> and Rosani's in the house. I just saw you. There we are. Um, Happy New Year, Rosani. Uh, it is fantastic attendance today. I am not getting any of the work done that I should be that I should be doing. I'm just chatting, chatting to you guys, which is awesome. Uh Penelope, remember the Alamo? Not personally. <laughs> Lily, simpler, happy, happier times. Penelope, um, Pinterest is very addictive. Yeah, I've heard, I, I should, sp well, I can't spend more time on that. We've said this year, this year I'm doing Instagram and Google. These are where my traffic's going to come from. See, I've, I've said it, so it will be. Um... Megan, our first family computer used to say Elvis has left the building when you turned it off. Fantastic. Um, I remember, oh, many, when the internet had just started and my friend was searching all over it and then came running down and said, I found it, I found it. And it was the last page on the internet. And it said, you have found the last page of the internet. Now switch it off and go and have a life. <laughs> I don't know if the last page of the internet still exists. I'm going to have to search for that now. Um, Georgia, I still remember when there was dial-up internet. I Well, I remember it existed, but I didn't use it because I didn't have dial... I didn't have a phone in my house. So I remember hacking into my mobile phone before it was a smartphone I remember hacking into that and using that as a modem for about a year, building websites and doing everything using my mobile phone onto my computer until my mobile phone provider cottoned onto what I was doing and I got a £200 bill in a month for using the internet and then I got a landline put in. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there, there was a time when you couldn't internet and phone at the same time. <sighs> I suppose it's a new year, isn't it? You're you're reminiscing of the past. Um, Wendy should be short, sorting a lot picked up on Facebook Marketplace last night, but hanging out here. Awesome. Yeah, well, here's far more important. Right. Okay. Okay. We've, we've got to the chat. Got to the end of chat for just now. So let's let's do what I was meaning to be doing. So we've looked at the order. So look at the traffic sources, um, which is actually good because that's what we're talking about so 55 percent of my traffic came from Etsy which is pretty pretty cool actually because the numbers are a lot higher and less of it was from Etsy so I'm getting traffic from elsewhere this is what we want get good views and then start driving it from out elsewhere and then direct this can be people who've got a link know what they're looking for Social media is only 8.7%. So for all the time I spend on Facebook, it really doesn't bring much. And this, the external search, this is 
Google, everything else. So that's coming in at nearly 8%. So we'll check this number and this number will hopefully be bigger next year and then other. And looking at the search terms and cat lover gift again has been my top search term by a long way. Now I've got a video coming out. I just filmed some of the, some of that on what I'm doing with these search terms that really it's a cool way to rank super quick. It's like super quick and dirty SEO for Etsy. Um, so I'll share that with you really soon. But you can see here's here's my top terms, which are pretty similar to what they always are. And the websites where people are coming from. So 2,000 from Etsy, 144. We've got over 200 from Pinterest and 120 from Google. So that's what I want to drive up a bit. And 55 from YouTube. So yeah, we're getting a bit of traffic. Pinterest, Google and YouTube. can check the other pages, but yeah, it's not really going to tell us. Anything below 55 views is not much. So these are them. We just want to bump up this Google number quite a bit. Let's, let's learn Google and let's have Instagram in there somewhere. Um, yeah, so that's for the month. Let's have a look at the year, shall we? Last last year. <laughs> Wendy, quick and dirty sounds like your kind of thing. Um, oh, Patty found Lily on Instagram, so awesome. Yeah, if you guys remember and share share everything for me to get after the stream's over. Um, so for the year, and here this is good, you can see the views, you can see how, like January and February still has a kind of residual bit of momentum. And then there's a crash in the middle of the year and then building up again. And that's normal. That's normal for any kind of sales thing, unless you're in bridal, but sales is gonna be this big dip that people, People are freaking out. I predict from about that day there, whenever that day is, there's going to be people all over the internet going, has Etsy died? What changes have they done? Everything's crashed. It's terrible. Um, so that that gives us some, some ideas of what historically was like last year. And compared to the year before, I'm up 10%. So yay. And for the entirety of last year, I had 198 orders, so close to 200, and a revenue of £6,600, which is awesome. You'll see how awesome soon, but let's compare that to this time last year. That is a 48% increase on last year, which is unbelievably amazing, especially because I've not been doing as much on it because I was more busy, so... Yeah, other years I've worked harder, but it just shows the work that you put in two, three, four years ago can pay off in the future. Oh, Georgia's off. Yeah, well, great to hang out with you. You have a great week and I'll see you next week too. Um, yeah, so there we go. Awesomeness for the year. Um, and still about 50% coming from Eatsy which is pretty cool. Cat Lover's Gift has still been the biggest thing and Needle Felty Dog. Really cool to know the terms that have been searched for and found over the past year. And the websites, Etsy is by far the number one where I'm driving traffic from. So, you know, that tells me where I want to be focusing my efforts the most. You know, if I'm, um, what's that, 10%? You know, if I'm only getting a fraction of the traffic from another site, then I shouldn't be putting four times the amount of work into a different thing. I'm getting the most from Etsy, so I'll put a lot of my effort there, and then I'll focus in on one or two of these and put a little bit of effort in them. But yeah, that's my year. And just for fun, just for fun, let's pop up the lifetime, all time, just so you can see what this looks like. Uh, Patty, yeah, thank you. It is. It, I'm so chuffed with it. And this is just to show you how my data for all time. Well, it doesn't go back to 2018. It just shows you from 2010 just because of how they've counted data. But as you can see, if anyone was watching this last year, you'll have seen the graph up to about here. 
I want to just point at this rather than use the mouse but you'll see the graph and I was really happy with that it was showing nice growth and then if you just look at the difference with what happened last year so if anyone tells you that you can't sell handmade on Etsy you can't grow on Etsy you can't do any of the things you know Etsy's dying have a look that's that just says it all for me and you guys have seen how much work I've put on Etsy which is less than other years so that is fantastic um and i wanted to say as well i think i think we can go back to my big ugly mug i should have done that earlier there we go back to my big ugly mug and the great news is this time last year we started mum's new shop as well we split her original shop into two shops and the good news is her year as well her year for those the new shop and the old shop combined did more than the old shop the year before. So yeah, she's done awesome as well. And as a few of you know as well, my mum couldn't put everything into the starting up of the shop that we'd have liked because she was ill for most of the start of last year. So just splitting the shop and doing a few little tweaks in SEO, her shop did way better than than we anticipated as well. So yeah, don't fear opening a new shop. Don't fear, fear doing Etsy. It's all good. It's all awesome. So congrats to mum as well. And yeah, if you go, how did you guys get on? How was your last year on Etsy? How did it compare before? Was it better than you wanted? Worse? And if you're not selling on Etsy as well, you're you're online. Um, I know Patty's been crushing it on YouTube. She's really growing up there. Uh, Rosani's um, on YouTube as well. She's getting her videos out. I think I missed one while I was on holiday, so I'll go back and check them. Um, but yeah, how has your online growth been during the year? Why was that so difficult to say? Ah, it's because we're nearly up to an hour and we know how I don't, I don't do very well. Well, after an hour, I lose the ability to speak. Uh, Wendy picked up another commission on Joyful Market. Ah, I haven't looked at that one. Yeah, I'll I'll have to check that out. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, yeah, thanks for the head up. We'll check we'll check that out. As I say, I'm not sure I've got time to start another one, but we might. I'll see. I'll see you. I like I like the name though, Joyful Market. That sounds utterly gorgeous. Really cute. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it. Um, oh, so, yeah, we've got a few few people in who weren't before. Um, you guys were late. How terrible! No, great to see you all. I've had so much fun chatting to you. But um, what I wanted to say was, if you, oh, Wendy, it's the Facebook group that you added me to. Yeah. So memory is shocking I do know that yes I should look more <laughs> yes sorry about that yeah um yeah so we have got Japanuary for our theme for January which is running great and if you make any Japan Asian themed makes then link let me see them and if you want to share them we can look through them at the end of the month um and also, right, yeah, here's something. One of the first things I want to make, I make these little, I don't know how you pronounce it, but little dolls. In fact, I'll see if I can find them. I was going to do a tutorial for... I bet you I can't even find it. Um, I can't remember what it's called. It begins with a K and it's not Kawaii or however you say it. Oh, does someone know what the name? Little Japanese doll things. It's like Kimmy something. Oh, what? What are they called? Well, we'll call them a Kimmy doll. Is that what it is? Yeah, that comes up as Kimmy dolls anyway. So I've needle felted these kind of little dolls. Oh, just these aren't mine. These are just what I've. I've googled so I needle felt these kind of little dolls which are so much fun to make and I was gonna do a tutorial on it make a video tutorial but I've had quite a few people asking about doing a felt along so would you guys prefer a Kimmy doll it has a different name that's not Kimmy doll um, a Kimmy doll 
felt along with me. They're fairly easy, fiddly but cute and so easy to make. We could do a felt along together or I can make a tutorial of them. Whichever you fancy doing the most. If you let me know in the chat or in the comments if you're catching this on the replay, if you want to do um, what, what kind of doll you want to do with these. I've got a ton that I've made before but it's something I think about an hour, an hour and a half, we could make some really cute dolls, or it could be a really cute tutorial. Just let me know which which you fancy. Um, yeah, and also what we want for our next theme. So we've got Japanuary just now. Let's let's back back to my big ugly face. Uh, we have Japanuary. And February, my thinking was possibly forests and fairies, forest fairies. Um, so let me know if that sounds interesting also. Um, so, or if you want something different, if you can think of something else cool, cool for Fs for February. Um, yeah, but just let me know. So that's, that's my thinkings. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, you guys are finding each other on Instagram. You'll have to link me, find me. I think I'm Ben McFuzzy Lugs on Instagram or possibly Pam Duffy. I'm not sure which. Um, but if you guys can find me and link everybody. I don't know, can you make groups on Instagram or something where we could all... What is that hand movement? <laughs> what am I doing? But if we... I should sit on my hands. Um, but if we could make a group or something where we can all find each other, that would be cool as well because I'm totally up for trying to support each other while I try and figure out the point of Instagram that I don't want it to be just somewhere where I, I try and promote myself. It should be an interactive community, so I'm not sure how we do that. Um, Wendy has to wait till after or she loses her chat for the Instagram thing. Yeah, um, I think you're on a phone or something. Yeah, so that gets you can't get seventy two seventy two different da, 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 seventy two different windows up. Anyway, I'll give you all a couple of minutes to <laughs> to sort out your chatting amongst yourselves. So yeah, uh, Melissa says you can have like a group. Awesome. We we shall have to figure out how to do that. There's something else for me to figure out how to do, but that would be cool if we can all find each other's. Uh, George, you don't felt, but you watch, you paint stone jewellery and wood jewellery and acrylics. Awesome. Yeah, you don't have to needle felt to be here. Absolutely not. This, um, The whole point, uh, we want a creative community and a lot, a lot of it what I started here for the Etsy tips and everything. It's just marketing, learning to sell online, learning to be creative, anything to do with creativity and artisticness. It doesn't have to be felting. That's just the creativity that that I work in. But yeah, you can you can do with, with that medium and that sounds really cool. Um stone jewellery and wood jewellery and acrylics sounds awesome. And if you throw in a little Japanery theme as well. But I know it means for the felt, you can't necessarily felt along, but you can laugh at what everyone else manages to make because in a live felt, I can really mess up what I'm doing. There's been no blood yet. There was even no blood when I did the blindfolded felting. And I do have some ideas for more danger felting this year, but we'll see. Um, because, yeah, Rosani's only just started needle felting. She's paper mashy, but we've sucked her in a little bit. Um, felt along is fun to see everyone's work. Um, ah, Rosani has creatures that all fit in with a Febu fairy, February type theme. That's awesome. So it looks like Febu fairy, fairy forests creatures sounds good for February. I didn't want to do. Everyone does like love, love hearts and stuff, but I'm miserable. <laughs> Um, and I prefer, and also I do have, I discovered, if you didn't see when I was doing the Maker's Box review last summer, I made a pair of tiny little wings and I thought that would be so cute to make something for the wings to go on. So I want to, I want to make fairies. And uh, Lily's going to attempt the next felt along. Also, well, we have to do, uh, we have to do a felt along then. Um, 
George arthritis. Oh dear, yeah. Um, yeah, that's arthritis and body's not working type thing. I've got a friend's mum, she's done felting for years and I know she's struggling now with her hands. And my mum used to do a lot of machine knitting and she has a bone thing in her shoulder that made that difficult to do. Unfortunately, our bodies do kind of fall apart. I have found, I have found these um, needle felting holders have really helped. I don't have arthritis, but I get versions of repetitive strain injury and I found holding onto something bigger really helps but I don't know that all the movement would be good but that could help with with people with arthritis -y things oh <laughs> Patty you are more than welcome to come and listen in we, we love the company as well and it makes it so much easier to have someone to chat to especially when I'm felting because I don't want to have to concentrate too much on what I'm felting, because where's the danger in that? And yeah, totally glad if I can help you with the SEO as well. That is mainly what I started. Well, I, did, I started this YouTube channel to get a home for Mia, who was my foster dog at the time, and I totally failed with that. And I made some needle felting videos, and then I started the SEO. So yeah, I was, <laughs> I was here mainly for the SEO, but we sharing the felting as well as something else to do but but yeah I, I totally know there's from from the YouTube groups there's such a great community of people that we all hang out with each other like even though it's not necessarily something that we would totally be into and it's so cool it's, it's a great community and I learn like about about your instrument that's great to watch and, and the lives are just fun to meet other people. I think half the time in a live stream I enjoy chatting to chatting to the people in the chat more than the, the actual person who's doing it. Wendy's been doing hearts, it's nauseating. <laughs> I did do a tutorial on hearts last year but I don't think I'll be doing it. I don't think I'll be doing that anymore. We've done hearts. That's oh, I did ah, that that's just got me thinking. I've got I've got a little doll that I've got to dig out. You'll love it. It's nothing to do with hearts. Well, it's everything to do with hearts, but it's nothing to do with sweet and love. Aren't we terrible people? Um, oh, Malith, you've got me on Instagram. Fantastic. Um, I hopefully I'll be able to see to follow you all back that catch me. Um. Megan, lots of stretching. Yes, um, that was a good thing. It's Dr. Stan Eckberg, who haven't seen him. Um, he comes into the chat sometimes here. He's a chiropractor who has a YouTube channel with lots of good advice. And one of the things he was talking about, respect, repetitive strain injury and lots of injuries like that. And the simplest thing, and I hadn't even thought of it, but when any of us who are crafting, we craft or we create our thing all sort of hunched up in the one position so you should stretch but you should make a movement in the opposite of what you're doing so if we're felting like this stretch out your hand every now and again you know just remember and do that and that's that's so much better for us all um Wendy ignored the holders until I started using yours and you gave it a shot and now you're naked without the holder. I know, yeah, I feel the same. I never felt that I needed them. And now sometimes if I grab a different needle or I try to kit over the holidays, I will finish it off and upload the video soon. But there was no holder in the kit, so I tried to use the needle without the holder and it just it felt so rot I'm doing the hands thing again, am I? Yeah. But yeah, I, I love I love my holders now. And it felt so weird to start with because how they are, can you even see? Yeah, it doesn't it's not directly in the centre, so you've got to get used to the fact that the needle's off to the side. But then once you get it, they just sit in your hands so nicely and yeah. They're, they're so good. I did. I did break a needle when I first used the holder because something I do a lot um, when I'm when I'm felting and making holes for things is I'll pop I'll pop the needle in and then I'll kind of twist it a wee bit to kind of force a hole better. And I forgot that 
there would be more leverage on the needle so when I did this and it went snap so I have to make sure that if I'm doing it it's like right right further in so there's there's less force on the needle but I only snapped one needle which is pretty good um Oh, Lily found me. I am Ben McFuzzy Lugs on Instagram. So cool. If people get me there. And yeah, um, George, yeah, so it's Ben McFuzzy Lugs on Instagram. I'm pretty sure it's also Ben McFuzzy Lugs on Pinterest because I made them both at about the same time. Uh, yeah, Wendy, it, it is strange. It's off center and you bent so many needles. Actually, I think I'm bending them less now. I'm used to it. My favorite needle that I worked without the holder it used to always bend a wee bit and another thing I found that you do have is because it is slightly longer when pulling it out of the piece you never pull it totally straight you should do but never totally straight so I was finding I was sort of pinging the end of the needle you've got to come out a little bit straighter before you curve but you get used to that you get used to that um <laughs> Windy, so that's what the problem is. Yes, right, guys. I think I really need to make my tea. I'm starving, so I think I need to head off. But it's been so awesome hanging around with you all. Oh, I've missed, I've missed this, and I seem to get the stream working. There's so many little things that you forget you have to do when you've not done it for a while. But anyway, yeah. Thank you for joining me, and hopefully. I'll have some videos up soon and I'll chat to you later. Thank you so much.